All right, welcome back to our unit here on nomenclature. Today's topic is covalent and polyatomic compounds. All right, so it's lesson two of three. Your objectives are as follows. You will learn what a covalent compound is today. All right, you will learn how to write the formulas and names for covalent compounds. You will learn and hopefully memorize the most common polyatomic ions. And you will also learn how to write formulas and names of polyatomic compounds. Feel free to pause this video anytime you feel necessary. Okay, for your quick write, consider the compound CO2. How is this compound different from NaCl? Hint, look at their location on the periodic table. Okay, and why do you think we use prefixes such as tri on words like triceratops, tricycle, or tripod? Okay. Go ahead and pause this if you need more time to do your quick write. I'm going to move on here. All right, covalent compounds. Earlier we learned about ionic compounds, which form between cations, which are usually metals, and anions, which are usually nonmetals. Okay. But covalent compounds, on the other hand, form when two or more nonmetal elements share electrons. Okay. So we're looking at nonmetals and recall that hydrogen is a nonmetal all right so the simplest covalent compound is hydrogen gas or h2 okay notice that the electrons are not transferred but in an ionic bond they were transferred but in a covalent compound they are shared the electrons are actually shared between the two atoms as a result covalent compounds do not have charges like ionic compounds Therefore, we use a completely different naming system when writing their chemical formulas and names. Okay, for your notes, what is a covalent compound? Question on the left-hand side, answer on the right-hand side. All right, naming covalent compounds. When naming covalent compounds, there are certain steps you must follow. These steps will help you throughout this unit and the rest of the course. Step one, the first element in the formula is named first, and the full element name is used. The second element is named as though it were an anion, right? We add I to the end of it. Prefixes, mono for one, di for two, tri for three, are used to denote the number of atoms. The prefix mono is never used for naming the first element. All right, so the prefix here, mono, carbon monoxide carbon dioxide, dinitrogen trioxide for three, okay, carbon tetrachloride for four, okay, dinitrogen pentoxide, and for six, uranium hexafluoride. So, let's look at another example here. Let's look at the name, write the name for a covalent compound CO. Okay. The first element in the name of the formula is named first. And the full element name is used. For example, we just say carbon for carbon monoxide. Pretty easy. The second element is named as though it were an anion. For example, okay. The oxygen in CO here is oxide. We put ide on the end of it. Then prefixes are used to denote the number of atoms. Since there is one oxygen atom, we would use the prefix mono for carbon monoxide. The prefix mono is never used for naming the first element. For example, CO here is called carbon monoxide, not monocarbon monoxide. Okay. So, let's try a different one here. Write the name for the covalent compound SO3, sulfur trioxide. The first element in the formula is named first, and the full element name is used. For example, we just say sulfur for sulfur trioxide. The second element is named as, though, as if it were an anion. For example, the oxygen in SO3 here is oxide, so we just put it. okay? Then prefixes are used to denote the number of atoms. So since there are three oxygen atoms, we would use the prefix tri for trioxide. 
The prefix mono is never used for naming the first element. Okay, SO3 is called sulfur trioxide, not monosulfur trioxide. All right, last one. So write the name for the covalent compound N2O5. Okay, so the first element in the formula is named first, and the full element is named used. So we just say nitrogen for dinitrogen pentaoxide. Okay. The second element is named as though it were an anion. So once again, we just put ide on the oxide here. Okay. Prefixes are used to denote the number of atoms. So for example, there are five oxygen atoms. So we'd use the prefix penta for pentaoxide. The prefix mono is never used for naming the first element. Okay. So since there are two nitrogen atoms, we don't really have to worry about this rule. And we do use the prefix di for dinitrogen, okay? All right, so for your notes, what are the steps for naming covalent compounds? Go ahead and pause this while you write. Okay, I'm gonna move on. All right, practice. Go ahead and write the names for the following compounds below, okay? When you're ready to see the answers, Okay, hit play. All right, so number one, we have sulfur hexafluoride. Number two, phosphorus pentachloride. Number three, dinitrogen tetraoxide. Number four, carbon tetrachloride. And number five, carbon dioxide. And for number six, we have nitrogen dioxide. All right, hope you did pretty well on those. All right, so now write the formulas for the following compounds below. All right, go ahead and pause this while you work on these when you're ready to see the answers. All right, go ahead and hit play. All right, so dinitrogen dioxide is N2O2. Okay, sulfur trioxide, SO3. Diphosphorus pentoxide, P2O5. And, uh, nitrogen monoxide, NO. Okay. Carbon tetrafluoride, CF4. All right. And silicon dioxide, SiO2. All right. So polyatomic ions. Polyatomic ions are a group of two or more atoms that have a particular charge to them. Think of it as a molecule with a charge. Okay. An example would include the ammonium ion, NH4 plus one. The ammonium ion here is composed of one nitrogen, okay, and four hydrogen atoms, okay, which give it an overall charge of plus one, okay? These ions are assigned special names that you must memorize. There's no rules. You simply must memorize their chemical formulas and names, okay? So here are the names and formulas of the polyatomic ions, okay, you need to memorize. So, these are the common ones, all right? There's many, many, many more, all right? I'm only making you memorize the most common, all right? So, I recommend getting some flashcards. All right, so for your notes, what are polyatomic ions? Okay, question on the left-hand side, answer down below here. Please write these down because you will need to memorize them. Okay. All right. So go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. Okay. So practice. Write the formula in charge for each polyatomic ion below. Okay. So go ahead and pause this while you work on these. Okay. Hit play when you're ready to see the answers. Okay. So hydroxide. OH minus one for nitrate, okay? It's NO3 with a minus one charge. And phosphate, okay, PO4 with a minus three charge. And sulfate, okay, SO4 with a minus two charge, okay? So ionic compounds with polyatomic ions. So naming ionic compounds that contain polyatomic ions is very similar to naming ionic compounds. For example, the compound 
NaOH contains the cation sodium plus one in the polyatomic ion hydroxide, OH minus one. So remember, when ionic compounds come together, their charges must always be neutral or zero. Just like ionic compounds, we write the cation first and the anion second, giving us the compound sodium hydroxide, NaOH, cation first, anion second. Okay, so let us look at the compound ammonium nitrate, a very explosive chemical here. Okay, ammonium nitrate is made up of two polyatomic ions. Ammonium here, NH4 plus one in nitrate, NO3 minus one. When two polyatomic ions come together, a neutral compound must form between them. All right, so notice the cation, once again, is named first and the anion second. Okay, and it's neutral because that plus one charge is balanced by the minus one charge. Okay, all right, consider silver one nitrate. The silver plus one cation comes first and the polyatomic anion nitrate NO3 minus one comes second. Okay, just like in ionic compounds, the charges need to be neutral. Okay, very important. So the silver cation Ag plus one Okay, is balanced by the negatively charged polyatomic ion NO3 minus one. So the charges are balanced, plus one, minus one. It is important to realize that silver here is a transition metal. It takes on multiple charges. Therefore, we still use Roman numerals to illustrate charge. Okay, so we write silver one, Roman numeral one, to show the charge, nitrate. Okay. Consider one more compound, magnesium hydroxide. The magnesium plus two cation comes first and the negative polyatomic okay, hydroxide anion comes second. Just like in ionic compounds, the charges need to be neutral. Okay, So magnesium plus two needs to be balanced by two negatively charged polyatomic ions, OH with a minus one charge. So we need two of these guys to balance out that plus two charge. All right, so in the case of magnesium hydroxide, when more than one polyatomic ion exists, we put parentheses around them. So notice there's two hydroxides here, so we need to put parentheses around them. By putting parentheses around the hydroxide ion here in a subscript of two, this tells us we have two oxygen atoms and two hydrogen atoms. Okay, so for your notes, what are ionic compounds with polyatomic ions? Question on the left-hand side, answer on the right-hand side. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. Okay, so practice. Okay, write the names for the following compounds below. While you work on these problems, hit pause and hit play when you're ready to see the answers. Okay. First one, sodium hydroxide. Number two, barium hydroxide. Number three, ammonium chloride. Number four, silver one nitrate. Okay, number five, calcium carbonate. All right, and number six, magnesium nitrate. Okay, hopefully you got those right. Let's try a few more practice problems here. All right, so now write the formulas for the following compounds below. All right, so go ahead and hit, pause this while you work on these and hit play when you're ready to see the answers. Okay, number one, calcium hydroxide. Number two, magnesium sulfate, okay, MgSO4. Number three, aluminum phosphate, ALPO4. Okay, number four, ammonium hydroxide. Okay, number five, okay, iron sulfate. Okay, and six, that's a tough one, calcium phosphate, Ca3, parentheses, PO4, parentheses with a two. Okay, all right, hopefully you got those right. Let's summarize. Explain the difference between an ionic compound and a covalent compound. What numbers do we do the following prefixes represent? Tetra, tri, penta, hexa. Write down the polyatomic ions you need to memorize. Arrange them in order according to their charge. 
Explain how we name polyatomic compounds. Explain how we write formulas for polyatomic compounds. Okay, and what do we do if more than one polyatomic ion is present in a compound? Okay, go ahead and pause this while you work on your summaries, and we'll see you next time.